the award-winning Beyond Vaudeville program with your host, Frank Hope, and your co-host, David Green. Super Duper star, Tom Arnold. Suzanne Muldowney as underdog. Comic Neil Connie Wallace. Rock on tour, Leonard Ben Meyer. And Joey the Monkey. And lots and lots more. I'm going to have to start reading the credits myself, I think. Uh, uh, now, I uh, just want to, uh, before we get started, I just want to show, uh, last time I showed uh, some of the records from my uh, Robert Goulet collection, and I didn't get to all of them. Uh, I want to point out that uh, I do have uh, tw uh, 28 of the 45 uh, Robert Goulet albums, and I'm looking in particular for a uh, one of them on uh, the Capitol, uh, one of the early ones, Without You. So if anyone out there has a copy of that one, uh, maybe we could trade uh, something for it. Uh, okay, and I uh, want to also uh, uh, show you the uh, new Med uh, magazine that's out. Uh, it had a, a funny uh, fold in, and uh, but I don't uh, I don't want to uh, ruin the uh, the magazine. I want to preserve it, so I I just sort of bend it around so you can sort of see it. Okay, David, why not? No, no. Okay. All right. All right. Well, you don't realize that those are uh, collectible, David, and uh, obviously. <laughs> Uh, uh, also, uh, the, uh, our, our first guest who we're going to bring out in a second is uh, featured on the uh, cover of, uh, of the, the Playboy uh, magazine this week. Uh, there are uh, 20 questions with uh, Tom Arnold. And uh, there's one. Uh, oh, boy. Uh. Uh. Uh, okay. <laughs> I bet you don't rip that one up, David, will you? Right. Okay, uh, I, you knocked my timer over there, David. I'm not going to know how much time we have left now. Uh, okay, well, uh, let's uh, welcome, uh, please, our, our first guest who we're very excited to have. We uh, call him a super duper star because he, he really is, and I want to say that uh, he's also a, a man of his honor because uh, uh, we talked uh, some time ago, and, and he he's promised he'd come on, and, and here he is. We're very excited to have uh, Mr. Tom Arnold. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah. Okay. Did you get your? Where's your timer on the floor? It's over there, but I don't. I wouldn't oh. expect you to get that. I wouldn't mind. Okay. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Joey, thank you, Joey the monkey. Yeah, threw us the timer there. Yeah. Uh, now. Uh, uh, now, uh, it's especially uh, nice that you came in because you were actually at your bachelor party. I am night. at, uh, yes, last night was my bachelor party. I'm getting married this summer. Right. And, and uh, thank you. It's always worked out well for me, you know. So, uh, no, I am uh, have all my buddies from Iowa in town. There's Mo, there's a few of them, Fred, Steve, Neil over there, and, uh, and a few others are still in town. And right. so it was fun. We went out last night, and, uh, you know, Chris Farley is uh, oh, he's yes. in the wedding. He's the best the man. Yeah, oh, yeah, very funny. Guy and uh, David Spade, he's who works with Chris. So, anyway, we all got together and we went out to several places. Okay. You ever been to Scores? I uh, know. Uh, oh. You ever been to Scores, buddy? Yeah, I think you'd like it. <laughs> Just once would be probably enough. <laughs> anyway, it was nice. We went there to a sports bar. Oh, okay. And uh, and we went there and we went to uh, the Ar Ariel. Is that how you say it? It's a great restaurant. Here. Anyway, we had tons of fun and my friends were very nice to me. They paid for everything. And that's where they have their big uh, screens and you watch the uh, basketball and the and the baseball. No, and mostly and it's just a bunch of big tits. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> but they do, I think they have basketball in the quarter somewhere. Uh, no, it's a great place. It's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a, a topless uh, place. Oh, well. but it's it's classy. Okay. Because uh, they're all fake boobs. You know, they aren't the real thing. They wouldn't do that to us. Okay. Now, uh, now uh, you mentioned that your friends were in. Now you you yeah. grew up in Iowa. Yes, right? I grew uh, up in Ottumwa, Iowa. Okay. Now I grew up out here, but uh, we have. Uh, I guess it's sort of the same. Did you have uh, what kind of toys did you like uh, growing up? Uh, the same kinds of things that. Well, I uh, I had you know I had a GI Joe, right. which was great. Did and you have the uh, one with the painted hair or the real? Uh, I had the painted hair. My brother had the uh, real hair. Right. Uh, actually, that was the uh, the, uh, the the he had the black GI Joe. Oh. Uh, okay. With uh, with uh, the uh, hair because uh, you know the kinkier hair was just cooler. And I think it even had sideburns. Was your brother uh, black? Black, yeah, he's black. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but he did, he got that one, it was really cool. And I had, uh, I don't know, what, what did we have growing up, guys? Uh, 
Logs. They get logs. We had those. We had, a, you know, we had it all. Right. Back in Iowa, we had toys for important because we didn't have any entertainment, you know. Okay. Uh, but, but you still you still go out there a lot to, to yeah. Iowa, right? Yeah. Yeah, I go back there when I can. Yeah, my, my family still is back there, except my sister is in prison in West Virginia. Oh. And, uh, well, that's a long story. But anyway, uh, I think you'd understand. Anyway, <laughs> I, I uh, yeah, but I go back. I love it back there. Right. It's great. You know, it's great to go home. Right. Now, uh, now I read in the, uh, the Playboy interview about the uh, different candies that you like. Uh, oh, yes. Right? And uh, you mentioned the M&M's uh, with the peanut M&M's. Yes, I like the peanut M&M's better than the M&M's. I, I, I uh, feel that when I was growing up, I liked M&M's. I liked anything because, see, my parents, I was the oldest of seven kids, and we, we didn't have much money, so we didn't get any treats. We never got any candy. Oh. You know, uh, once in a while, they'd, you know, they'd throw together something uh, with some sugar in it. I'm not sure what it was, and we'd eat it. But uh, we had locks on our cabinet doors so that we couldn't eat between meals. And my friends will tell you this. You, know, you ate at 8 o'clock for breakfast. You ate at noon. You ate at 5. Anything outside of that, your your history. So what I, what I said, first thing I'm going to do when I get rich is uh, eat a whole whatever food I want whenever I want. And right. that's why I'm a fat hog now. But uh, <laughs> it worked out, you know, okay. But anyway, I do. I like that. I like to. Well, I, what I do is I usually, I, I, I work out every day. I'm healthy. But once in a while, like last night at Ariel, is that how you say it? Yeah. Yeah, it was so great. Yeah, but we, we are every dessert and two of several. Oh, it's the best place in the world. Oh. And it's just fabulous food. And I'll pig out once in a while like that. And I like to, you know, I'll go, like in the magazine, I brag about eating, you know, uh, four Big Macs and four quarter pounds of cheese. It was. Mo backed me up on this. They, they've been there with me, uh, uh, you know. And what I have, when I eat, I really, if I'm going to go for it, I go for it. Because I'm an alcoholic, you know. We, we do oh. things big. And since I, I, do, I, don't, I don't drink anymore, but I do, you know, I, you know I'll, I'll have a lot of food once in a while. It's fun. Okay. Well, we have a very uh, nice McDonald's downtown where they have, like, a piano and... Uh, really? Really? <laughs> yeah. You should try that uh, while you're in Got any town. strippers? Oh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Now, uh, you mentioned you worked out, and you've actually worked out with the great uh, Mr. Schwartz. Oh, yes, I have. Uh, oh, many and, times. Uh, I brought some pictures that... Uh, 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 you know, we haven't even talked about your movies, but your no, movie okay. careers are all over the place. Well, I haven't even got that picture. Oh, color well, I'm not. I'm not parting with this, Mr. Yeah, Arnold. that's good. Uh, <laughs> this is. Uh, I tell you, the weird thing about working out with him is, you know, we travel around. We shot at like eight different locations, and you go into the gym with him, and one, tra you know, he'll go. Uh, with maybe one trainer will kind of help him, and one one will help me. And the guy that helps me is always mad that he didn't get a you know bit work with Arnold Schwarzenegger. So he has to prove himself to Arnold. So he just tortures, puts me through this <laughs> grueling thing. Okay, buddy, one more. He's yelling towards Arnold, so Arnold hears that he's really it's hard, you know. Well, that, that was of course uh, this was in that when you were in the True Lies movie. Yeah, you, that's right? True Lies. Yeah. That was last year. And this was that was. Uh, the Jackie Thomas show, wasn't it? Jackie Thomas. Yeah, right? that was my TV show. Right. My first one, they got was, canceled. Uh, they, they critically yeah. acclaimed that. Yeah, it was. Thomas it was show. a good show. It was right. a good show. And then, what uh, a this, you were on this, there. Uh, totally! Oh, oh, no, that's Mr. Oh, he's coming up. Oh, one. okay. <laughs> oh, I missed that one. Lord. Uh, okay, but you have That's much? scary, and I'm guessing that was about 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, now, uh, now, Mr. Arnold, you uh, you have lots of movies coming yes. out. The, the carpool movie. Well, and the, uh, yeah, I have that. The first movie I have coming out is called Nine Months, and it comes out July 14th with uh, Hugh Grant and Robin Williams and Joan Cusack and Julianne Moore. And it's uh, directed by Chris Guest. She's great. Julianne Moore, she's great. Do you see Shortcuts? I don't. Uh, did you remember the Winfield? Yeah. The shirt and no, no pants. Anyway, I, 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 I didn't. She was a good. She was acting very well in that. But she's a very nice person. And, and Chris Columbus directed it, who lasted Mrs. Doubtfire, and that's a, that'll be a very funny movie. And that's this summer. And then after that, a movie called Big Bully is coming out in August with Rick Moranis and I, which I just finished. And it's about a story of a kid who has a bully when he's ten and he moves away from town and comes back 25 years later and the bully's still there. Is the kid a regular size uh, in the? Well, it's well if you call Rick Moranis regular size, so <laughs> stretch it a little bit. No, but he's a small, and uh, the bully would be me. Okay. Who's uh, you know above and beyond regular size. Okay. Uh. That feels good. Do that there. Oh. They charge you twenty bucks for that down at scores. Come on. <laughs> oh. uh, no, and. Uh. <laughs> And then there's another, on the Highway Patrol movie. Right? Uh, Highway Patrol, yeah, actually, what I'm doing right after that, I, I start a movie uh, in, in, at the end of this month called The Stupids with uh, John Landis directing, and it's produced by Imagine, which is uh, Ron Howard and Brian Grazier, and that shoots in Toronto till the middle of August, and I start a movie called Carpool with Arthur Hiller directing, who's got many, you know, he's done many great movies. And and, uh, and then, after I take a few months off, then I'm going to do uh, Highway Patrol, which is based on the old uh, Broderick Crawford TV show. And I would play Broderick Crawford's son, and he's in it. You know how in Forrest Gump they had uh, people in it. Uh, uh, he's going to be in it too with me. Okay. Well, that's even uh, though he's dead. 
Uh, now, uh, uh, Mr. Arnold, I don't know if this is a uh, sensitive subject, but can I just ask how uh, things are with you and, and Ms. Uh, Arnold? Uh, Bar, uh, no. <laughs> no, she's Ms. Blank. The Roseanne. She doesn't have a last name. I, okay. Uh, things are, uh, we got a divorce. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, <laughs> it's not good. Um, but she's, uh, I haven't, I don't speak, to, I haven't spoken to her. I wish her well, and I know she's married and having a baby, and I, things seem to be going great for her. Right. I'm very, very happy. Well, you were great on her show, too. I well, think. thank yeah, you. I had a good time. Uh, uh, now, uh, uh, now, uh, Mr. Arnold, we'd like for you to stay, if you may, and uh, oh, I'll be happy meet, to stay. meet some of our other friends. Oh, I'd uh, love to be. Oh, There's okay. lots of interesting people here. Uh, and that's, well, just the, uh, that's just the crew. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, uh, one, well, our, our next guest is uh, one of our uh, favorite uh, people. She was on our first program ever. and uh, I have seen her on one of the tapes oh, you good. sent me. So you, yes. Oh, so you know oh, each I'm other. I'm a fan. Uh, okay. Well, please, let's welcome uh, underdog herself, Miss Suzanne Muldowney. <laughs> Uh, okay. here. Uh, no, I, Suzanne, would you like to come over here? Please? Oh, that's very uh, cordial of you, yeah, Mr. I put Arnold. this on, but I don't want some sort of lawsuit. Um, okay. I, I figured that was your place. You got up from there, so I figured that was where I was supposed to go. That this was oh. the, that was my well. They, uh, the, uh, the sometimes they move people down once when the new person comes. Right. But I, you know, no offense. Okay. Thank you. Are <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you friends with my ex-wife? Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Now. Uh, um, okay, now everything settled down. Uh, Ms., uh, now, Ms. Uh, Muldowney, you're, uh, this is the 31st uh, anniversary of Underdog, right? The, the cartoon. Um, yes, Underdog originated in '64. This is his 31st anniversary, but I'm not making a, a really big deal of that because usually it's it's anniversaries that are multiples of five that are given more attention. Right. Okay. And uh, uh, now, uh, what did you do last year for Underdog's thirtieth? That had to be a big one. I I toured in uh, many different places and events, uh, which I contacted to let them know that it uh, was the, the character's thirtieth anniversary. Some some locales and events I was already a regular in, but I also wanted to go to some other places uh, which I had never been to before yet, or might have. Uh, uh, benefited from my having been there. Now, was it like county homes and psychiatric facilities, or was it? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just uh, sorry. No. I know, I know. I'm teasing. I, I know. I, I uh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I know. I, yeah, I, like I say, I'm a fan, and you'll Frank will back me up on that. Uh, okay, maybe I better ask the next question. Yeah, I'm sorry. But they were, uh, they I'm were, serious. they were science fiction conventions, oh, yeah, block parties, yeah. carnivals, and and especially parades. Oh, I love parades. Okay, well there we go then. Uh, Parades and uh, okay. Oh, Let's uh, now, Ms. Moldana, you've written uh, something called the uh, Interplanetary Olympic Horror, right? Yes. And this uh, involves uh, it's an original uh, script about uh, underdog and uh, six different uh, fighting planets, right? Um, it well, there well the planets aren't actually fighting. What happens is there is a distant solar system consisting of six planets, all equidistant. Uh, from their one sun. They're, they're threatened with annihilation, some big outer space disaster or maybe what. Underdog averts that disaster and then sometime later um, an inhabitant from one of those planets comes to inform him that they're going to have an athletic sports festival, uh, you know, equivalent to our Olympics. And they want Underdog to come and be mascot. So Underdog, Polly, and some media people go to that other system where the games are taking place but it turns out one of the planets in that solar system is governed by uh, a tyrant uh, called King Relta, uh, which is Hitler spelled backwards. It's, uh, it's neo-Nazi. Oh, man. Um, and Hitler wanted the San Diego chicken to be the mascot. <laughs> I, I, just, I just, I know, I, I don't know the whole story. <laughs> sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, uh, <laughs> um, Maybe you should sit on the other side of the table. I'm sorry, I'll be okay, I promise. I'll okay. Be back. Um, well, well, King Relta's planet, Nebril, which is an anagram of Berlin, automatically acts hostilely toward, uh, uh, toward Underdog. And what actually happens is uh, Nebril has a large arsenal, weapons and such, whereas the other planets don't. Right. Um, the other planets are all utopianly harmonic, the way we've always wanted men to be. But, uh, but King Relta has an assassin apparently do Underdog in so that Underdog's presumed dead and lies in state 
um, inside a big memorial <laughs> arena, and everybody's convinced that he's dead, and um, then, then, then there's, a, there's a surprise night attack by that Nazi planet on the other planets, so that King Relda takes over the solar system, transfers the games to his planet, and, and, uh, and, he, and, he, and he has his soldiers kill off um, athletes who don't win, or natives from his own planet that, uh, that should have won, or things like that. And uh, people don't, just don't know what to do. Then uh, um, Polly is taken captive by, by uh, one, of, one of Welta's soldiers in a black disguise. Um, and the soldier asks, What's a, what is this event about to take place? And they tell him, and the soldier says, excellent, now watch. And he does something, but um, the, we can't see what he's doing. And we cut to the stage, it's completely dark. Uh, there's only one spotlight there because they're waiting for the next competitor. It's completely black. You see the, you may see these other black-clad soldiers. It's completely black, and then the soldier, or rather the announcer, announces the next competitor representing all the planets, Underdog, and there, boom! Underdog steps into the spotlight. He's back. And does the <laughs> Brian, can I, may I, uh, ma'am, and I, with all due respect, I would just like to ask a question about underdog, a little underdog trivia. I was at the Smithsonian. Have you ever been there and seen the, uh, they have underdog's penis uh, on display there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, okay. It's a dilliger and an underdog. It's a, I know, I, I'm serious. I'm very sorry. Listen, I, uh, you know. Oh, boy. You've just succeeded in equaling yourself to another arch enemy. Oh. With a profane statement like that. Um, I apologize, uh, Ms. Muldowney. Uh, I, okay. I am sorry. I am okay. really, uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, now, the uh, play, uh, oh boy, sounds uh, very uh, interesting, and, and, and I look forward to seeing it uh, stage in its entirety. Uh, well, well, it requires a great many people to do it, and I've never been able to get it done. Also, well, because it involves Olympic Games, it's best if it's done in a circular enclosure like a baseball field, a basketball court, or a similar enclosure where there are bleachers all around the perimeter where the audience sits and the actions, the, the athletes originally parading in a circle and games taking place, or the athletes the winning athletes going over to greet the heads of state okay, that but, way. But you it's could best do it. done in a circular enclosure. But, but can you do a little bit for us right here? Uh, I, I can I can do the number that I spoke of, um, in which Underdog make us, makes a surprise return after everybody was convinced oh, that, that he had great. been done okay. in. Okay, well, yes, excellent. if you could do that. You can hear from the music yeah. yourself uh, that it's a dramatic opener. Right. Uh, <laughs> that would be great. Okay, there we go. Uh, I think you're all set. Uh, Don't you have to lie in state first? Let's just get your music. Uh, <laughs> I, I, no, I just, I, I, I like the story. You told it. I, I, I was just going along with it. Right. I heard the story. Okay. I thought you lied in state, then you jump up and down or something. I, oh. I don't want to simplify it. Uh, okay. He's just a little wound up from the party last night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think. You weren't, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I, you know. <laughs> <laughs>
Johnny. Now, that whole production's actually two hours or so, right? That you do? <laughs> right? Sure seemed like it. Uh, no, I'm TV. Uh, uh, he's, yes, uh, he's I, Arnold, I, I, I promise okay. that. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the, entire, the entire story is too long to have been one of Underdog's original cartoons. In its entirety, the story would last two to three hours. Okay, all right. Now, uh, Suzanne, please uh, stay with us, but we want to make sure everyone comes out and we, we want to bring a little comedy into the program uh, right. with uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Neil uh, Connie Wallace, please. Yeah. Well, hey, I gotta get my tool there. He would make a human shish kebab out of you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, Tom, you spent all that money in scores last night. Yeah, well. And we get underdog for nothing right hey, here. Hey, buddy. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> Well, hey, you did a little uh, stand-up comedy, right? You did a stand-up comedy. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, so. I'm a Johnny come lady there. Yeah, so that's the camera up there, buddy. Right. I got to yeah, get back right there. there. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. <laughs> I got the worst job in stand-up comedy. You know what I have? I'm a warm-up comic at an open mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's all, it's all other comedians. As I they're coming in the door, I gotta be, you know, make sure they take their no doughs, right, right. <laughs> then I grab a couple on the side. Now you gotta practice smiling, you know. That's it. Move the end of your lips so up, up, not down. Up, 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 up. Right, right, right. <laughs> now try to laugh, e -e 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 -e, like I do. E -e -e -e. <laughs> Ah, never mind. Go in. Leave your five dollars at the door. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did a movie myself. Tom had a good movie there. True Lie there. He got a lot of kadoos about that movie. You know, he didn't even mention yeah. it. You know. Oh, uh, thank right? you. Thank they you. were looking to rack him over the coals. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you drew him a cable. Oh, buddy. yeah, thanks, buddy. I yeah. know the good shot. I seen that. Yeah. Oh my God. You know. <laughs> You never, you ever realize how slow the time goes when you're not talking about yourself, right? <laughs> I made a movie too. I got a last uh, early this year. Spike and the Monkey. Anybody see Spike and the Monkey? No. I had, no. A, I had a small part in that, right? And uh, I got into the flyer, so I got a lot, a lot more screen time than normally I would. You know, a lot of people thought I had a big part in the movie, and it was a movie, an odd movie with semi nudity. You know. And you know I do this old pain in the ass nerd character, right, right, right? <laughs> and I can follow the director around and ask him, you want me to take my pants off now? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> my scene was sticking my head in the window and saying a couple of lies, yeah? But I thought semi-nudity meant everybody had to be a little, had to be a little nude, right, right, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after a few times that I, yeah, that right, good. right, after a few times that I had right, my movie career is at a total standstill. I got another movie might be out this spring, but enjoy yourselves and say hello to Tom. He's great. Oh, He's great. Thank you, buddy. Great job. Bye. Good job. We might have to take the A uh, double uh, S line out, you know, from the. You swore. Oh, I'm she's sorry. Against yeah, that. I didn't realize. That's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. You didn't. That was an honest yeah. mistake. Yeah. Uh, but please right. have a seat. Do you, God, under God, God, you understand God. that a few weeks ago, TV, TV talk shows in general were being given the thumbs down because there was too much confrontation, foul language, or provoking of fights. I agree. I don't, I, I don't want, I I don't I don't want I this show sticking to their example. You're right. I think he's an asshole Especially for doing yeah, it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting much work now. Now I'm going to be completely unemployed now. Right, okay. right, right. Yeah. Let's bring it. I agree next with you guest, on the uh, dog. Okay. Right. Let's bring it. Oh, Good job. Excellent job. We want to introduce our next uh, guest, uh, Mr. Uh, Leonard uh, Ben Meyer to the program. Okay. Yeah. 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 How do you do? Hey. How do you do? Hey. Yes, yes. All right. First, uh, first, I, I, uh, I was given this by a dear friend of mine. She assured me Need the that microphone, it... Mister oh. Ben Meyer. I'm sorry. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, anyway, she assured me. That'd be the cameras. Huh? Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> she assured me that that looks like me. I don't know whether it did or not. But in any case, in any case, when I was on there, I made a point of saying that I was wanted to be the oldest new face in television. And I'll tell you how this came about. Because for years I was, you know, it's like all aspiring uh, performers. You get upset with all these new people coming up like young Mr. Arnold over there. So I did a lot of introspection and I introspected and introspected back to the minute I was born. And a tre tremendous revelation came to me. I realized the instant I was born, something happened everywhere in the world, not just here, everywhere, every ethnic group, every language, geographical group. What happened then? The instant I was born, you see, they stopped making people older than me. So my aspiration to be the oldest face in television, the, the numbers are with me. It can only, competition can only get smaller, not bigger. That's a big, good bit of wisdom. All right. All right, entertain the motion to adjourn. Okay. Uh, this, and, uh, we want to bring out uh, Joey the Dancing Monkey so we can uh, make sure we get that. And, uh, okay, uh, hi, Joey. Uh, hi. Oh, thank you.